Jamaica Rugby League TV. We are here with Stephen, the national coach for the South African Rugby League team. Of course, as you know, Jamaica, South Africa and the USA will face off this October for a single place in the 2013 World Cup. Now, Steve, firstly, what has it been like um, for you? Um, what, what has this experience been like for you, sharing with 20 other nations here in England um, on this technical course? What has it been like? Come on, smart club. <laughs> no, uh, great. I, I was pleased to meet you guys, and I think it's going to be a great uh, playoff in, in October. I think it's going to be something fantastic, something new for us. We're used to playing the British and that. We're looking forward to visiting you guys. Uh, we know you and America have played against each other. Uh, it's going to be something new, a new type of rugby league there. And uh, yeah, well, let's hope the best team wins in that. And I'm sure that will be South Africa. We're confident that we will will beat you guys. Uh, we won't beat you. We'll whack you. And uh, but before we whack you, we'll be beating America and that. But uh, it's great meeting you guys. I think the personality of your three members here in in England uh, is something phenomenal. It's something I didn't expect. I didn't think the friendship would be so close, knowing that you guys are opponents and, and the Americans. And it's just been enormous to me. It's, it's fantastic to, to meet you guys here and I really hope the, the show off in October may the best country win and I think uh, for the losers it's going to be a sad loss because you're going to have to wait four years later up until 2017. But well, great. As you say that um, Stephen, uh, definitely the two nations that will not qualify um, will certainly be heartbroken. Um, they will have to wait four years until the next competition. Now, as de developing countries, do you think that there should be more done to, to help us to have more international games more regularly? And if so, what do you think the international bodies perhaps can do to assist that process? Well, I think with the development now at this stage with, with this specific course, I think it's a course that uh, really, really demonstrates that all your new rugby league learners, your new rugby league coaches and that have really learned something out of it. This is basics. This is basically something that coaches like ourselves that have been in the game for so many years tend to forget. Looking at your training group and that you won't pick up the basics and you'll concentrate on the more advanced stuff. Developing countries, I think, yes, they can do much more for us guys. Uh, this is a start. I think there is more to come. Um, in, the, in the case of the loss of the two nations, I don't think it's the end of rugby league for them. I think uh, the guys that are the administrators of rugby league in those different countries have to just bite the bullet and, and push through, you know. And uh, South Africa being isolated, I think we're the most isolated country from rugby league nations as, as distance-wise is concerned. But uh, we need something different. There is countries, there is countries that want to come to us. There is countries that will come play you guys. That I think in the old past time there was an emerging World Cup. I think maybe there. The International Federation could look at something like that, that we could get guys, um, you know, playing, playing, playing an emerging World Cup and maybe using that more as a qualification instead of going to countries and uh, home nation maybe got the advantage playing at home, different climate conditions, have an emerging World Cup, prepare that for, you know, with all the nations that are there, 10, 14 countries, and uh, that, that could be a great advantage to, to any of the nations that would play there or, or, or qualify. So, yeah, I think the Rugby League International Federation can do a bit more. And uh, yeah, we're hoping for the best in October for the best country. Do you do you think, Stephen, that um, that there's a possibility to get other African countries um, who are geographically closer to you to take up the game? I mean, uh, you know, we know it's very difficult out there in the Caribbean. Only Jamaica plays in, in the English-speaking Caribbean, and I know firsthand how difficult it is to convince people to try a new contact sport. Um, what has your experience been like, um, you know, being in the southern part of Africa? And do you think any time within the next five years, do you think another nation will, will pick the sport up? Well, look, in Africa at this stage, I do know that Morocco do play rugby league. There, there, there has been negotiations that we can go play against them uh, in the past. Um, South Africa being a rugby union nation, growing up with kids from six years old playing rugby union. So the, the boys do grow up playing rugby, so it's nothing new to them. I think when they move over to, to rugby league, you know, uh, they've got to just learn the game type, you know, the rules, regulations of the game and that. I think it's the International Federation's duty to have a look in Africa which countries want to, or which countries are interested in playing rugby league you know, and maybe promoting them because they are much closer to the northern part where the countries will more than likely come from. We are busy with negotiations in the Emirates at this stage. Uh, I don't know how far that is. Our president Dave von Rennen is busy with that. Uh, looking for a game uh, earlier in the year, maybe a June or July or maybe August before we come down to you guys. The only other country that's offered us a friendly at this stage is Canada. 
But uh, yeah, I think there is a future, but uh, we we got to get the guys interested in the game. You know, being a, a rugby union orientated country, such a such a big country with rugby union, you know, being world champions at this stage, you know, with the World Cup coming up with the union and that, you know, so everything is focused on that. But uh, rugby league, yeah, uh, we've got our staunch guys that have been in years for rugby league and uh, yeah, it's those guys that have to develop the the game in South Africa and then Rugby League International Federation develop it maybe in, in, in North of Africa, you know, Morocco maybe uh, using as a starting point. Um, final question, Stephen. Um, if you, as a coach and as a national coach um, of a proud nation who has been in Rugby League for upwards of um, how many years? Plus, oh, minus 20 years. Plus 20 years. What advice um, would you give a young Jamaican player who has who's just taken up rugby league, whose aspiration it is to get to the highest level, to, to, to play in the World Cup qualifiers and even the World Cup itself. And what advice as a coach would you give to that player? Well, I think at this stage we sit with variably the, the same type of problem. Our youngsters are playing rugby union. To convince this kid to come over to to rugby league is a hard task due to the fact that when rugby union became professional in South Africa, it was it, it was something huge. Uh, everybody all of a sudden receiving money to play rugby, you know, with the financial situation in South Africa, if a kid could get a few bucks playing on a weekend, we would rather play rugby union. Motivation for the Jamaicans, they don't know much of rugby union, where we have got the skills of rugby union that we just have to develop in a rugby league culture, and we can be competitive in the world against bigger countries. Jamaican players, I think you, you, you've got to offer him something that he can get out of that. And uh, my offer to my players is the following. Guys, you have the ability, the chance to play in a World Cup, that one day when you're 40, 50 years old, you can tell your kids, boys, we played in a World Cup, rugby union-wise, you're going to play for your few pennies on a weekend, and that's where you're going to stay. For a Jamaican boy on that, I think it's much harder work coming from a country that's not rugby oriented like South Africa, but uh, there is ways and means of trying to convince those players to play play uh, in a cricket oriented country like yourself. Last question, if, if, um, if Habana had a 100 meter race with Usain Bolt, who would win? Uh, Stephen Fonsal, head coach of the South African <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Stephen. <laughs> it's only a pleasure and I wish you guys well. I know we still here for two days, I've got to put up with the sore back from the coach, sore back from the administrators. Yeah. But, uh, Stephen tried to take good me is, out, you know. uh, What good is, I have learned to something October, in South guys. African, is once is clear, meaning we are finished. That's great. But it was nice meeting you guys. You are the most fantastic nation in cricket. I support the West Indies big time. It's a pity that they are out, but um, <laughs> yeah, a pleasure. South Africa is out as well, but it's a pleasure meeting you guys. and. I hope to see you guys in October, October. something positive for us and uh, a little bit more, less positive for you guys, you know, but it, yeah. should be, it should be a great game. Uh, Thank you very thanks much. Thanks guys, that one's fantastic. There you have it. Okay. Uh, you deserve your water The bottle. national coach for the South African team. Um, bring in the beef, bring in the beef in October. It will be a lot of fun, boys and girls, USA, South Africa and Jamaica fighting for one place at the 2013 World Cup in the UK. Tune in for more.